Hi there, I thought I'd do a very, very quick video um, on a Gibson Les Paul Deluxe Player Plus Satin Vintage um, that I picked up in Guitar Guitar two days ago. Um, this was bought to replace a 2013 uh, Classic Custom, which I could not stand and would not stay in tune. It was horrendous. I had it for years and eventually made the decision to replace it with a Strat and uh, went in, saw this and bought a Les Paul instead. So without further ado, I'll quickly open it. Excuse my dodgy camera work. So that's it here. It's absolutely stunning, beautiful. It's one of the heaviest, heaviest guitars I've ever picked up. Um, I think it was weighing ten pounds on the scale exactly. Um, no doubt you may, you may have seen the chappers in the captain video from Andertons um, with a kind of breakdown of it. Um, it's a very good video, I'd recommend that. But I just thought I'd show you what's actually in the box uh, when you pick one up. So, lift it out. Just kind of like to see the back. It's kind of fully satin. Um, satin neck, satin back, uh, satin front. It's got a, a lovely bright white binding on the around the body and around the, the neck as well. Um, really, not your kind of usual antique one, it's, it's really, really bright. So, let's set this down here, just now. It's got like an unusual finish on it. I don't know whether that's like in a, a single A finish. Uh, what's it called? Like in a wood grain effect, obviously it's graded in, is it triple A, double A? But, um, it looks nice. So, what you get in the box, I was quite surprised at this. Uh, when I bought my last one in 2013, and uh, you never seem to get any of this stuff. And forgive me, I have actually removed this little thing. I think it looks really cheap and nasty, so take that off. It looks far nicer without it. Um, so, in the box, and forgive me, I have actually opened this and put it back in just a moment ago. So I'll lift it all out. You get a little Gibson uh, cloth. A very, a very kind of cheap Gibson strap, but a free strap all the same. Your um, warranty card, um, a little kind of velvety bag. I'll show you what's in that in a minute. Your owner's manual and a circuit jail bag. So, in the little velvet bag, in two seconds, I'll just open this. Yeah, in the little velvet bag, there's quite a few things. I thought this was really, really neat. It's almost like a baby photo, um, a photograph of your guitar on the bench at Gibson, which is quite nice. It would have been nice if it was maybe sitting on a scale or something to tell you the weight or, I don't know, it had some information on it, but it is just a, a blank photo that shows you your actual guitar, apparently, allegedly. Uh, also got, what's this, the kind of inspiration certificate, um, the date it was all done. And then... The bag, this nifty wee thing, we kind of Swiss Army knife for guitars. So it's got screwdrivers and a little kind of truss rod tool. I've um, not actually used it yet, but I thought it was quite funky, you got that for free. You also get, which is fantastic, the scratch plate is in a bag separate, so you've got no holes drilled in this. You won't need to take the scratch plate off when you buy it and love with the, the two extra holes or try and hide them with something. Um, it's, it's optional. And obviously my option is to put it in the box and never ever touch it. So that was that was pretty much it. I just wanted to show the kind of the, the case candy off and very very briefly touch on what it looked like. So I'll show you the sides. It's kind of satin, the bright white binding. It is absolutely fantastic. I'm so pleased with it. I was a bit apprehensive about the whole rich light fretboard, which has been discussed to death online. Is it is it good? Is it bad? I'll try. I'm getting really really close on it. I would challenge anybody to go into a guitar shop and be handed a guitar with a rich light fret fretboard and be able to actually identify it because it looks like a really, really good bit of ebony. Like, really, really good. Obviously, there's, n there's no grain. Plays beautifully. Really smooth. Is that rubbish? <laughs> bit of dust on there. Really, really nice. Apparently, 
one other thing I was going to mention is the, the Grover machine heads. Apparently they're not locking, which I've never really heard of before. As far as I knew, all Grover machine heads were locking machine heads, but but I've had this for I say I think two days, and I've played it a lot, like a lot. It's been in my living room with the radiators on. It's been in the kitchen where it's pretty cold, so there's been temperature changes, and it's holding tune fantastically. It really is. It's got a set of hybrid strings on it that came from the factory. And guitar Guitar did do a wee brief setup. They just brought the action down for me, but it's it's really it's staying in tune fantastically. I'm really pleasantly surprised because that was the whole reason I I get rid of my mother Les Paul because the tuning was horrendous, particularly the G would constantly go out. And no matter how much tinkering was done, it would always be the same result. But as I say, I only put this on because I, I couldn't see a lot on it. And I know a lot of people like to see kind of close-ups of bits and bobs before they buy, such as myself. Um, what was the last thing? The, the strap buttons. Are these kind of nice? I don't know if it's like an alley mini or something, alley or something, but they're kind of big and chunky. Really, really nice as well, a bit different. It's really is, it feels like a really high end guitar for for nine nine nine. It's absolutely phenomenal. Can't can't fault it. So anyway, this is the first time I've ever put a guitar video on YouTube. So I hope hope it does something. I might stick one on me playing it a little bit just to let you hear it. But it, the thing rings. It really is. It's beautiful, beautiful sound. Even acoustically, it's it's quite loud. So there we are. Anyway, bye.